eyes what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For there's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. There's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little lips, what you say. Oh, be careful, little lips, what you say. There's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So be careful, little lips, what you say. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. There's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. There's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So be careful, little feet, where you go. So watch your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands, your feet. Watch your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands, your feet. There's a father up above, and he's looking down with love. So watch your eyes, your ears, your lips, your hands, your feet. Hey, you did good to that last slide. You can have a seat. That was a little harder. Yeah. This is the kindergarten teacher that thought that. <laughs> the lesson today is about Abraham meeting God. Abraham got to see God. I always think it's neat when people in the scripture get to see God. As you read this from the Hebrew scriptures, you would find out that Abraham sees these three men coming down the road. And he doesn't address them as three. He addresses them as my Lord. In the Hebrew, he's addressing them as Yahweh or Jehovah. Just as simple as that. He is addressing them as God, the three of them. We call this a theophanies. Can everybody say theophanies? Theophanies. That was really poor. Theophanies. Theophanies. That means where God appears, but appears as man. God appears, but he appears as man. It's a theophany. And we see three of them. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Abraham runs out and greets them. And he's excited about seeing them. And as he says, he says, listen, I want you to stop. He says, and I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your hearts. He says, hang on a bit. We're going to have a feast together. Now, it says a morsel. A morsel means a little bit. But this is how the little bit went. He said to his servant, go out to the herd, pick out one of the finest, fast calves that you can find, dress it. Bring it in for my wife. We're going to cook it up. We're going to feed these guys a morsel. I'm going to tell you, if it's a whole half calf that's being cooked, that's not a morsel. That's a lot more than a morsel. Right, Alex? Have you ever eaten a whole calf? No. No. How about you, Gary? You like to eat. Have you ever eaten a whole calf? No. No? Would you like that? Not a whole one. Would you like to try? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I remember one time being the uh, pig roast, you know, they got the pig there in this big spit there, and the apples in its mouth and stuff, and, and it looks still like pig, you know. I wasn't too excited about that. I like mine when it's all cut up. How about you, John? You like it when it's all cut up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes it easier to stuff. I know where it came from. No. <laughs> yeah, but it's different when you have to look at it to take a piece of it. Buy it store. So Abraham says, we're going to fix him a meal. Now I'm going to tell you, he wanted to spend some time with him. If you ever want to spend some time with somebody, fix them a meal or take them out to eat because then you have an opportunity to spend some time. Two things happened during this time together. Number one, God reiterated his promise to Abraham. While they were eating and as they were finishing the meal, God says to Abraham, next year at this time, your wife Sarah is going to have a baby. Sarah's 90 years old. She's laughing inside the tent. <laughs> I'm going to have a baby. God, who knows everything, says to Abraham, How come your wife laughed? I always think that's funny. You know, Abraham's not in the tent. But they obviously were very much one because Abraham kind of knew that Sarah was laughing. 
And anyhow, she denies that laughter, but God says, you did laugh. Incidentally, laughter and Isaac, Isaac means laughter. In fact, if you hear, hear somebody pronounce Isaac in the Hebrew language, you'd think they were laughing. <laughs> I don't know how that would have been when I went to school with a name like Isaac, you know, that everybody's going to laugh at. But it was one of those things. And so there was a reiteration of the promise. And then there was also the fact that they said, Abraham, we're not going to hide from you what we're going to do. This is not a warning. It wasn't a warning that they could change things. It was God simply saying, this is what we're going to do. Too often we get focused on the things that God is going to do because God has to do, and we forget to look at the promise. It's interesting. As I've read through scriptures, Anytime God physically meets with somebody, he always reminds them of a promise. Sometimes he gives them a brand new one, but there's always a promise. Most of the time there's a warning about something. A warning means that you can make it better. But sometimes he just passes information on that this is going to happen. The information was about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham does a real important thing. He prays through. Meaning that he prayed till he had peace. Lots of times things bother us. And we pray. But we don't pray till we get peace. We need to pray until I have comfort from God and I have peace. That's praying through. This is what happened when Abraham met God. That's the end of the children's story. Now, Kevin, now you can do the rest of that. Okay. Offering ushers and worship team. <laughs>